So here I am with the next set of IPL team analysis. Now, I've already analyzed a few teams and have faced online grief for my analysis of SRH. I have been told that I know nothing, which is possibly true, and that this is not an analysis, this is an opinion. Well, an analysis is based on certain amount of data. Um, and again, a caveat for all of these teams analysis. Teams analysis don't mean anything. It Everything is what happens when you show up on the day of the event. But, and that's where the analysis takes place is that the IPL selections, the team selections are a leading indicator of what your performance could be. It does not accurately predict it. If it did, then I would make, and most people would make, many people would make a lot of money betting on the results, but we never know, right? So even a crappily constructed team can play very well because ultimately what IPL comes down to and T20 cricket comes down to is, and this is where it's very distinct from um, other forms of cricket, the longer forms of cricket is that one or two players can essentially make, consistently can keep on making an impact and can propel a team of, to punch way above its weight. And the biggest example of that is Kolkata Knight Riders in the latter half of last year's IPL tournament, where just essentially it was the entire team's performance was anchored around two or three people. And there was an absolute lacuna in the middle order where there was nobody performing. And on the day of the finals, though that lacuna was exercised and the, the team collapsed spectacularly. So, but again, it still reached the finals with a, essentially a problematically assembled team. So, you know, none of this is might mean anything in the final analysis, but it does say something about at least the strengths and weaknesses of the teams as they come in. So enough of the preamble. Now let's get to the first team. The first team is Gujarat Titans. So the Titans, the word Titan in Greek mythology, um, they were the children of uh, Uranus and Gaia Earth. Um, and they had a battle with Zeus and his brothers who were the Greek gods. And after you know about decades of battles, the Titans were defeated by Zeus and they were imprisoned in a place called Tartarus, which was actually a factoid, which was going to be the original title for my book, The Mind, Tartarus. But I, I went for mine because nobody would know what Tartarus is. But Tartarus essentially is that place below hell where the worst of the worst stay. Which brings me to Gujarat Titans. And... Uh, you know, how their team is right now looking. And now, of course, they're the Gujarat franchise. So you have to always consider that there is, you know, Modi and Amit Shah and, you know, Titans themselves in many ways. And maybe they've selected the team and maybe the team that goes out to play Amit Shah has taken out players from some other team and put them in Gujarat Titans. I'm kidding, of course. Um, let's look at the team. So the team uh, that was drafted, so this was one of the new franchises, so uh, they, they went through the draft rather than retention. So they drafted uh, Hardik. Um, this is perhaps the second attempt when a Hardik has been chosen to save Gujarat, political joke. Um, they have Rashid Khan and they have our KKR's future or who we thought would be our future uh, Mr. Gill. So if you look at their 11, if you look at the 11 that they're most likely to have, there is uh, Shubman Gill and there is Roy, Jason Roy. And this is a fairly good opening combination, quite a good combination, I would say, because again, it combines that dasher with the more solid play. But then, then there is this problem. Who's gonna come next? So you could put uh, Matthew Wade there and he would play the wicket keeper. And, but then there is another slot for another Indian player. I don't know who that is. Then you have Hardik Pandya coming in. And then you have a slot for another Indian player. And then you have Rahul Tewatia, Rashid Khan, Loki Ferguson, somebody like Yash Dayal and Mohammed Sham. So the positives, the positives of this team is that they have quite a decent bowling attack, I would feel. At least their first bowling attack is it's fairly good and varied. I mean, you have Shami, you have, and we have not seen anything of Yash Dayal, but good things are being said. But again, it often happens that good things are said of many players, but when it comes to performance, they just can't step up their game. So we really need to see. But Loki Ferguson and Rashid Khan. 
are two of the best T20 bowlers in the business right now. And for the Gujarat Titans to have them, that, that's a solid bowling core. And you have, you know, Yash Dayal, you have Sai Kishore, you have Jayant Yadav in the background, and hopefully Pandya will be bowling at some point of time. So in terms of a bowling outfit, I think this is fairly good. I mean, it could, it's pretty much, you know, could be one of the top bowling franchises in, 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 in IPL this year, purely because of, you know, these two players. Now the negatives, and there are many, is that the first off, it's, it's the form of Hardik Pandya. Hardik Pandya hasn't been the same ever since his back injury. And that is, I think, one of the reasons why Mumbai Indians did not choose to retain him. I mean, Mumbai Indians are a very canny franchise. So whenever the Ambani is essentially divest an asset, you have to wonder why. And uh, you have to wonder what is going on in their head. So they have basically, they are bearish on, it's obvious that they are bearish on Hardik Pandya's future, especially at the cost that, you know, his in the return and investment on him is not worth it or was not deemed worthy for the uh, for the Mumbai Indians. And of course, I mean, he would have been he would have been a replacement for Sudhir Kumar Yadav. They couldn't have kept both of them because they would definitely have been the second guy after Rohit Sharma. So they let him go. And the problem with Hardik Pandey that I have is that you know he has to bowl in order for him to be worth his place in the team. I don't think he makes it consistently purely as a batsman. As an all-rounder, yes, definitely. Very vital asset. But just as a batsman, I don't think he's... Like, the the, the classical definition of an all-rounder is that an all-rounder is someone... I mean, I'm not talking about Murali Vijay classifying himself as an all-rounder. I'm talking about real all-rounders. So if you look at Jan Botham or Kapil Dev or Richard Hadley or Imran Khan uh, or Jack Callis, you know, the thing is that they could walk into the side and play purely as either as a batsman or as a bowler. They were as good as that. So that's really the definition of an all-rounder. And if Pandey is trying, and of course his role is as an all-rounder, I don't think he's there yet. He's he's a batting all-rounder, I would say. But his batting also is not that great that the bowling isn't needed at all. So that's the main concern. It's the form of Pandya. Now, the, the other thing is, you know, it depends on... The, the problem with having an English player as one of your main marquee stars is that there's always this problem with availability of English players, and especially Jason Roy, who's, who's definitely in their first 11 when it comes to T20 and one day. So much of the balance of even their unbalanced top order is, is, is vitally dependent on Jason Roy. So take him out. If Jason Roy doesn't play, you can put Matthew Wade in his place. But Matthew Wade and Jason Roy aren't like for like replacements. I mean, Jason Roy is way, way better batsman than, than Matthew Wade. And it's just, it depends. And, and here's where the problem is. You know, you start off with Gil, Shubman Gill and Jason Roy, and there is a slot for an Indian player. You could put, let's say, 3D Vijay Shankar there. But do you really, is that a good team where you have Vijay Shankar coming in at, you know, essentially anchored in the entire innings? And so essentially there is a huge gap in terms of core Indian players. And Pandya is coming at the back. Or Pandya could try to perhaps bat at number three, number four, but these are not roles that are made for him. You ideally want Pandya to come in at number six. So from Pandya and Tewatia, from Gilroy to Pandya and Tewatia, there is a huge, huge gap. And you could have Matthew Wade maybe coming in there, but there's still two Indian players that are missing in this side. And of course, you can always hope that one of the uncapped players will come and do what Venkatesh Iyer did for Kolkata Knight Riders last year, which has come from nowhere and establish himself as a superstar. But right now, that is the main problem. So it's like the half big top order. So if if Ray if, if Jason Roy goes early, then I don't see how the batting can recover. And that's really a fragile top order. It is a decent um, finishers, I would say, with Pandya and Tevatia. But I think that the main problem that the Titans got themselves in was they basically, among many things, uh, I think they way overspent on Tevatia. 
I don't think that Tevatia is that level of a consistent performer. I mean, he had one very good season, but he's kind of been on the downswing after that. Again, one never knows, but I'm not getting a good feeling by looking at this Gujarat Titans team. I mean, it started off well. I think they they, they did a decent draft. And Gil and Roy are a very, fairly good opening pair. I mean, they complement each other. But then there is this huge gap, lacuna, from the opening to the finishing. There's basically no middle order. And that is, I believe, is going to cost them dear in the tournament. So my, you know, how, how many points do I give them? I give them 5.5 out of 10. Um, and I would say minus one, which I always say is, it's, there's always a minus one when you haven't played together. And again, this is going to be a side which hasn't played together. But let's keep the minus one to the side because I'm feeling bad giving them a 5.5. I mean, they're new to this franchise. But again, I think that they possibly had the worst option. Um, they did a good, decent uh, draft, but I think they had the worst option of, of all the other teams. And that's saying a lot.